Hello, I'm Dave Luo, and I'm happy to present our solution for the OpenAI Challenge Tanzania. I'm the CEO of Anthropocene Labs, where we're building AI-powered tools to better understand and manage our planetary health. My contact info is below, and I'd love to tell you more about what we're doing. But for now, let's move on to the main topic. Thank you to everyone who has played a role in putting together this challenge. It's an amazing op learning opportunity. Also, thanks to all the open source tools, communities, and libraries uh, that have allowed us to advance as far as we did. Approaching the challenge, we treated it as two distinct tasks. The first is a segmentation task to find the buildings. And two is a task to classify the condition of those found buildings. Preparing the data, we created our training data for segmentation as square tiles, along with their pixel masks at three different zoom levels. For classification, we cropped buildings using their polygons into new images and attached labels corresponding to those images. To develop our models, we created a custom unit for segmentation using a pre-trained ResNet50 encoder, and also used the ImageNet pre-trained ResNet50 architecture for classification. Putting it together for prediction, we take our input tile images, put them through our segmentation model, polygonize the outputs of that into georeference polygons of each building, take the building polygons and crop them into new images of every building, which we run through our classifier, which gives predictions of whether each one is a complete building, incomplete building, or foundation. Finally, we take all these predictions and we update the polygons to create the final color-coded map you see on the right. This approach allowed us to achieve a mean F1 score close to 0.7, corresponding to average precision of 75%, average recall of 65%, and using this link, we can interactively explore our model results. So you can visit this as well, and you'll see that uh, we have model outputs here for a huge image grid uh, that is outside of the train and test sets. This is an area east of Zanzibar City where the model has automatically detected 14,000 buildings along with their corresponding conditions at a satisfying level of accuracy. Looking around, you can see where it does well, where it doesn't do as well, as well as clicking on one to look at their classification confidences. Looking ahead, we plan to continue R&D to advance the baseline for these models and techniques. We believe that this should serve just as a foundation, not the ceiling for our learnings, and that we will have better approaches as a result of open sourcing everything that we do. So if you visit this GitHub repo, you'll see that we've already started to publish a work in progress to build better classification and segmentation models using the latest, most modern libraries, such as the FastAI V1 library, which is in active development now, and PyTorch 1.0. This repo will also contain notebooks related to data processing outside of deep learning, but just as integral to putting everything together. And it is in active development, so there will be breaking changes, but we hope that you'll find it useful nonetheless, both in the short term and definitely in the long term. We're also applying our knowledge, our learnings, and our models to new applications, such as building a rapid change detection model for building damage after disasters. Looking at these early experimental results uh, from Palu, Indonesia, where an earthquake and tsunami recently struck, uh, we're looking at satellite imagery pre and post disaster from Digital Globe's open data program, pre on the left, post on the right, and we train a model to map buildings in white and create a grid of detection uh, for changes to those buildings in red. So here it's accurately detecting a liquefaction event caused by the earthquake in the west of the city. If we zoom out, we can also see the entire city in one go and very quickly spot other sites of structural damage, such as another liquefaction site to the southeast near the airport, and damage along the coast as a result of the tsunami. Once again, these are very early results, but I welcome you to explore the URL and let me know what you think. Here's my contact information. I'd love to hear your questions, your thoughts, your ideas, so feel free to reach out. Thanks again.